Hello, everyone. My name is Annika Rohrm, and I am the PAA Membership Officer. Thank you for joining the 2023 Annual General Meeting of the Psychologists Association of Alberta. Before we begin, I would like to cover a few housekeeping topics. Today's event is being recorded, and the recording will be posted on our YouTube channel after the meeting. We will have a question and answer session at the end of our event. There is a Q&A and a chat box on your screen. If you think of a question for the speakers at any point, type it in and our moderators will pose it to our speakers during the discussion portion at the end of the event. We also invite you to chat with your fellow participants or provide comments to the PAA team by entering those into the chat box at the bottom right of your screen. This is an interactive event. We will have a hashtag value psych for everyone to share how they are attending the virtual event. There's also a PAA pop quiz going on throughout the meeting and everyone who participates will be entered to win an additional 20% off your next workshop registration. All right, I'm going to introduce Dr. Judy Malone, PAA CEO, to lead us into the land acknowledgement. Welcome everyone. We begin all of our events with land acknowledgements because of the value and importance. We do this to strengthen our awareness of the presence, the rights, and the history of all First Peoples. We do this to recognize our shared history and responsibilities as far as colonization and its impact on the Indigenous peoples of this land. We do this as a transformative act in response to Indigenous erasure. And we do this in respect to the need for meaningful change towards reconciliation. We weave this, we, sorry, we do this all the time and we really do it in part to ensure that we are weaving Indigenous presence into all of our systems and processes because that's how we make change to systems. We are here today in Calgary, Treaty 7. Our members are from all over the province. And so those are traditional meeting and traveling routes for really diverse Indigenous peoples. We have Cree, Bene, Stony Nakoda Sioux, the Blood, the Blackfoot Confederacy Nations, the Mechis and Métis Nations of Alberta, and many, many others whose languages, histories, and cultures have really been woven into the fabric of our society since time immemorial. It is their footsteps who have marked the territories that we all get to live, work, and play on now. In recognizing the contributions and the historical importance of Indigenous peoples, we take a, a very necessary, albeit a very small step, towards realizing the promises and the challenges of truth and reconciliation. I now, uh, oh, sorry, and just before I turn it over to our president, Claire Peterson, I invite you all to go into your chat box and share what territory or traditional lands you're on as you attend this meeting with us here today. Hi, hi. Claire. Thank you, Judy. Welcome everyone to the 2023 PAA Annual General Meeting. Thank you for joining us today. I am Claire Peterson and I'm honored and delighted to serve my second term as president of the PAA. Today's meeting will include the president's report, CEO report, treasurer's report, and finally our motion for special resolutions. As a PAA member, you build on the strength of our profession here in Alberta. Our core values of access, inclusion, collaboration, leadership and psychological health, those are shared values. And together, those are values that are realized. We collaborate with every psychology professional association in North America to really maximize those benefits for us and for all. This annual meeting really is our opportunity as the staff and your strategic leadership of your association to share with you, our fellow PAA members, in our accomplishments of the last year, our directions moving forward, and please mark that you're joining us. If you're on social media, use that hashtag, hashtag value psych, uh, and that also gives us a little glimpse into how you're joining us today and for this meeting. So uh, before I invite Claire back, it's time for your first pop quiz question. Which one of these is not one of PAA's core values? 
And remember, if you're answering the quizzes, you get entered to win an additional 20% off a workshop just because you're participating. You don't even have to get it right. Okay, Ada, roll the poll, please. Again, the question is, which one is not one of PA's core values? Individualism, <laughs> look at our group. We know where things are at. Thank you for participating, everybody. Claire, now for the President's Report. Hey, good afternoon, PA members. I am both grateful and honored to be serving PA again this year as your president. I'm eager to get to work on your behalf alongside the other members of the Board of Directors. Nikki Wilson in role of past president, Nira Singh in the role of president-elect, April Salziano, member at large, Tamara Austin, member at large, Dr. Sandra Dixon, your early career representative, Samantha Gruber, provisional representative, and Catherine Archibald, student representative. We are also excited to welcome Chris Pollock, treasurer, and Dr. Quintina Bearchief Adolfo, member at large, to the board. And we look forward to the fresh perspective and unique experiences they bring with them. I'd also like to take the opportunity to extend heartfelt thanks to our outgoing board members. This year, we fondly say farewell to three board members that I have the utmost admiration and respect for Dr. Sally McLean, Heather Gower, and Dr. Jackie Linder. We wish each of you the best and continued success as you pursue other projects, roles, and opportunities. Thank you for your service, leadership, and commitment to the advancement of our profession. I would also like to congratulate our CEO, Dr. Judy Malone, for being awarded the CPA Fellow for Distinguished Contribution to the Advancement of the Profession of Psychology, the APA Fellow for Extraordinary Contributions to the Field of Psychology Over a Lifetime, and the CCPPP Mike Testchuk Award for Lifetime Contributions to Psychology. Congratulations, Judy. And finally, it is with sincere gratitude that I wish to thank and recognize each of you as our members for your hard work, dedication, and contributions to psychology. This past year has not been without its challenges. However, I'm continuously amazed by the resilience and grit that I witness when talking with psychologists across the province. May the upcoming year feel steadier as we continue to advocate for psychology in Alberta and promote the well-being and potential of all Albertans. Together, we are all PAA. And now for the second pop quiz question. <coughs> Do you know where to find volunteering opportunities with PAA? Would you go find them at Collaborate, Mentor Match, Professional Guidance Program, or the Referral Service? Okay, we're ready to see those results. Yes, of course, you can head on over to Collaborate to find all PAA volunteering opportunities. Now it's Dr. Judy Malone's turn to provide you the CEO report. Hey, well, PAA members, thank you for building on the strength of our profession here in Alberta. It has been a rewarding year of coming together, sharing, and realizing our core values of access, inclusion, collaboration, leadership, and psychological health. This year, our goals were advocacy, education, and collaboration to maximize benefit for all of us. I look forward to meeting and speaking with each of you throughout the year. That is actually one of the greatest pleasures of my role. So if you see me at a town hall, an event, please do come up and uh, let's chat. So rather than me personally hitting the highlights of this past fiscal year at PAA, I want to play our year in review video because I really think it does a much better job than I do at speaking of how we are working with you, by you, and for you as we work to advocate for psychology's unique value, promote the psychological health of all Albertans, enhance the development of psychologists across our career lifespans, focus on PAA's membership value, and ensure our financial sustainability. So Annika, if you could play that video, please.
so many amazing resources. That video is on our YouTube channel. We use our social media, YouTube, infographics, all those great resources to communicate with the public and you, our members, but we also give them away. So as members, please take and use those great resources as they work for you. That told a bit of a visual. If you like your narratives in a written form, Ada has popped that link back in the chat. We have our annual report. It's one click away, you can download it ask us questions or just use it to celebrate what a strong profession we are in the province and how we have been growing. So please do go check out that annual report. And of course, another pop quiz question for you. Excellent. Which PAA program launched just this January? Was it professional guidance? the Psychological Services Fund, collaborate our connection communities of practice groups or symposium. All right, Ada, let's see those results. Ooh, good, good. So actually more people than ever before got into our communities of practice this year, but we launched it the year prior. So we built that up. As of this year, January specifically, we launched our professional guidance program. And so for all of you who are coming to join us at the PAA Gala, and last I checked, there was about 265 of us getting together in a couple of weeks at that night of celebration. And you'll get to meet Dr. Harpreet Gill there, our Director of Professional Guidance. So come on out, we'd love you to meet her. In the meanwhile though, I'm gonna switch over from all the great stuff we have been doing to the tremendous job that your strategic leaders take with our fiduciary and financial responsibility. So here's Chris Pollack, ready to report to you as our treasurer. Thank you, Judy, Dr. Malone. My name is Chris Pollack and I am your treasurer. I'm pleased to report to the PAA's membership, all of you, on the financial status of the association for the 2022-23 fiscal year. Uh, PAA's audited financial statements for the fiscal year April 1st, 2022 to March 31st, 2023 ended with a small operating surplus and a small overall deficit as the board directed the allocation of additional funds to projects that support members. Uh, the net assets of the association remained stable um, and notably, PAA continued to show slightly increased revenue from membership growth, workshops, and website advertising. There were no major changes to the budget or financial status of PAA. The PAA's strong financial status provides a, a solid foundation upon which we can continue to improve services to members, including the addition of the professional guidance services Judy referenced, um, improved referral services, additional professional learning, and secure file storage for retirees. As treasurer, ensuring the funds are wisely spent to provide benefits to members in the short, medium, and long term remains a, a high financial priority. In accordance with our bylaws, uh, we contracted Mahone and Associates Chartered Professional Accountant Services to audit um, and serve as our auditor on the board's behalf. I'd like to take the opportunity to thank them for their uh, outstanding and incredibly detailed um, audit. Uh, I'd also like to express my thanks to uh, all the PAA staff, board members, and key contributors for their um, prudent and responsible approach to managing uh, the budget and financial resources of the association. Um, financial statements are available if you uh, want to dig into that thing on request uh, from the PAA office. Um, and before I invite President-elect Mayor Singh to go over the special resolutions, uh, I do need to make a motion to appoint the auditor for next year, and you can vote on that motion on the Zoom poll. So I, Chris Pollock, Treasurer of the PAA Board, make a motion to appoint Mahan and Associates to prepare an independent financial report for the 2023-2024 fiscal year.
Thank you for voting, everyone. And the motion is carried. So I also get a pop quiz. So I feel like I get two polls, which is, you know, awesome. Um, what month is uh, psychology month? January, February, April, or August? Okay, let's see what let's see what everyone says. The answer is, in fact, February. PAA hosted our first ever psychology open house last February in recognition of Psychology Month. So now to Mara Singh, your PAA president elect. Thank you, Chris, and thank you everyone for joining us today. My name is Mira Singh, and I have the privilege of being your president elect. This year, we have two special resolutions to vote on. Special resolutions are used to amend the PAA bylaws. All life, full, and ECP members are invited to vote on the posted amendments. This year, both of the special resolutions regard PAA member categories. First, PAA would like to add a new membership category, non-practicing membership. The amendment would add a bylaw 4.9 as follows. Non-practicing membership, non-voting, is open to an individual who was previously but no longer registered with the College of Alberta Psychologists, was previously a PAA member for at least two years since 1996, is of good character and reputation, and pays the prescribed dues. Uh, Non-practicing members are not eligible to use the PAA referral service and must only list PAA, or PAA membership as non-practicing status. Please take a moment to vote by the posted Zoom poll. You have 60 seconds. Okay, let's see. Thank you for your votes. The special resolution has been carried. The second and final special res resolution I would like to introduce today would also add a new bylaw in terms of a new member category for professional counselors membership. This amendment would add a bylaw 4.10 as follows. Professional counselors membership, non-voting, is, is open to individuals who are counselors or psychotherapists registered with the College of Alberta Psychologists who are not also registered psychologists. Of good character and reputation, pay the prescribed dues. Uh, professional counselors members are not eligible to use the PAA referral service or to access the CPAP or CPA professional liability insurance program. Again, please take a moment to vote via the, the posted Zoom link. Okay, the results. Thirty seconds. Looks like the special resolution has failed. Okay, thank you for your input. Before I ask Claire and Judy to come back for closing remarks, it's time for pop quiz question. You want to market your private practice or your friend is looking for a psychologist. What PAA program does both of those things? A, collaborate. B, PAA's new referral service. C, Google or D, mentor match. Okay. 
Yeah. Is new referral service. As a registered psychologist or provisionally, provisionally registered psychologist, you can post your profile on the PA referral service and new clients can find psychologists through that service as well. Thank you all for participating in the votes for the special resolutions and for the pop quiz. Welcome back, Claire. Judy. Thank you, Mira. And thank you to each of you for joining us today and participating in, in the polls. Uh, we appreciate your time and commitment to our profession and look forward to continuing to work for you, the members of PAA. We will continue to collaborate to improve health outcomes for all Albertans, and we will continue to challenge ourselves, our profession, and our communities to become models of a caring, healthy society. I'm hoping that I will see many of you at the gala at the end of the month. Well, and thank you to all of you who took time out of your busy schedule, Friday lunch, and you're joining us because of your passion, your interest, and your commitment to your association and to your own personal and professional growth. Um, like Claire, I really look forward to seeing a lot of you at the end of the month. It's really a fantastic celebration of our award recipients, and we get a chance to celebrate the province's newest psychologists, those who became registered in the last year. Um, but for those of you who are not going to be able to join, we want to leave you with a short video over year of this year's celebrated contributors. Do we have the video of the award winners? Awesome. Oh, sorry, we'll pop that video in in a little bit. It went straight to one of our polls. Polls are fun too. We love polls. This is great. So again, we will notify the winner of the 20% discount. We have this final question for you before we do our uh, question and answer period. And that is, how many members does PAA have? Over 4,000? Less than 1,000? Over 3,600? Or 2,706 members? Place your votes now. We're all over and that's fantastic. It shows that kind of range. It does change throughout the year, but last year we peaked at just over 3,800 members. So close to the 4,000 as well. Now, um, in case we don't get that last video, please go to our YouTube site and check out the award winners video. It's a very short clip, but it's just a fantastic way to celebrate the people who won our awards this year. Well, of course, you're doing that, and you're also going to vote very shortly uh, if you haven't already on the poster contest. Oh, I popped you right into the chat at the same time. There's actually some just tremendous research going on in this province. Let's celebrate and learn from our peers doing that research. Check out our posters and vote for them. Now we're really fortunate to have time for questions and answers. Uh, so please, oh yeah, that's a great slide. This is your opportunity. I'm gonna turn it back over to Ada and we're here to answer any questions or to hear from you and get your feedback as members. What is that you or Anika? Uh, so far we don't have any questions in the chat, but if anyone has any questions that they would like uh, post to PAA, to our CEO or president, please go ahead and pop your question in the chat. We'd be happy to answer. And it, it looks like there's a notification of one in the Q&A, Anika. Do you have access to that? Yep, here we go. Uh, the question says, would it be possible next time for the motions and resolutions to be posted in a more obvious place for all of us? Ada, can you reiterate where we post them? And then you guys can give us also suggestions for other spots. Sent out in two separate emails.
So there we've got uh, two spots on the website and it came out in e-news uh, twice to all the members. Please though do send us in your suggestions just to the main office of other places, you know, if you go more to collaborate, etc. It's better to have it out more places than not enough. We received another question just asking if someone could speak a little bit more about the idea of having counselors join PAA. I'm happy to let I talk about this. I'll just do the national perspective and then your board members can talk about in our province. For some of you who aren't registered in other places, I know you might not be aware of this, but there's a movement in North America to omnibus boards. BC, British Columbia, sorry, as of April will no longer have a college of psychologists. They are having a, um, they don't call it an omnibus board, sorry, the name just escaped me, but they're going to have a board that's going to have many different professions within it. The motion here speaks to us being prepared if that happens in Alberta and only if that's combined with our College of Alberta psychologists. So for any reason, if our college was asked to subsume other professions under it, that we would have membership part of our role. So strategic leaders, what do you want to add to that? I think um, <clears throat> one of the, the points on there that we were interested in is if they were uh, governed by CAP, that we would uh, be perfectly willing to offer them services in exchange for their membership fees, but that we didn't want to uh, have it dilute um, the psychologist association part of the um, of the of the association, um, and so there was a non-voting piece in there that you would have you would have noticed as well. So it's a, a tricky area where we're trying to uh, prepare for things that might be coming, um, and just think about ways that we can do that that kind of still holds the value of psychology up. Um, but doesn't have us kind of like left out of a conversation. And I think the, the focus of our board conversation was a lengthy discussion at the, at the board table was about that preparation piece that Chris is talking about um, and making sure we were ready should that come down the pipe, that that's something that we had already thought about. Um, and so we discussed it as a board and then felt like it was really important for us to get input from our membership so that we knew where everybody stood before we might be in that position. And it, it sounds like it might be a bit of a contentious issue and something that definitely needs a little bit more conversation and we're we're happy to do that. So if you do have any other questions and want to send them forward after the meeting, please do. But, and just final thought from your CEO's perspective, um, I can either go to tables and advocate for psychology and counseling and how we are similar but different, or I can be competing with another organization that's only representing the counselors and maybe saying they could do the same things that we can do. Thank you very much. We have another question. Um... This one is a little lengthier, but it is asking about hearing comments and thoughts regarding the rationale for the number of wards that PAA presents and why this is a priority for PAA's funds. Did I want to go first? The number, the number of awards well, that are given and prioritization of funds for that. I'll just do a little historical perspective for my decade at the PAA. At one point, we even talked about possibly reducing the number of awards or under certain sort of categories. It's really easy to keep adding awards. It might even be something we continue to do. But awards is absolutely essential, and almost every professional association does that because what we're doing is celebrating who we are. It's a very important uh, member benefit. Fascinating psychology are one of the groups that we don't tend to celebrate our work well. We don't tend to uh, be out promoting our work in a way that many other professions do. But we have some absolutely amazing leaders, people making critical differences. And to celebrate that is really, really key. Uh, I think your treasurer may correct me, but I think it's 0.25%, like a quarter of 1% of our budget. You can run the numbers. We don't spend much money on it. You have a volunteer committee, an outstanding group, uh, many of whom are past award winners. 
who adjudicate those awards, take the time to really clarify the criteria and support those nominations. And then, um, so I guess it's just really the gala tickets. We get fantastic sponsorship for the gala. Many, many of our um, great sponsors, BMS, Jane, the personal, I don't even have the list uh, in front of me. They're also excited about emergent leaders in psychology and people who are making a real difference. So they donate towards that uh, fund for us. So it's really our opportunity to celebrate. Anything anyone would add? I think like in terms of providing um, some uh, advocacy for psychology and some positive news stories um, that people will pick up on as well. It's a really good way for us to kind of be out there in the public holding up these kind of exemplars of kind of key performance that then allow the public to have a perception of psychology that is perhaps more accurate than might be portrayed in your normal news cycle of like horribly negative things that show up. That celebration of one of our values, which is leadership and setting ourselves apart. And I would have commented the same as you that the sponsorship that we get really makes that event um, possible and not at a significant cost to us. But as the treasurer, I do appreciate the question about where we're spending those funds and what we are spending them on and where the value is in that. So I think um, it's definitely worth consideration in all of those things. And we were talking about um, financial risks today um, in terms of that. And so that's something that we do think about and have conversations about, but it's great to hear from people um, to maybe then revisit those things and be like, well, like how much should we be spending on that? Um, so we'll definitely take that into consideration moving forward. And if you do have any other thoughts on, on those kind of financial things, we're certainly very interested in the input of members because in the end, um, it's your association. Our. <laughs> I think the awards is actually a really important part of what we do here with the PAA and part of the banquet, it's that celebration, right? That piece where we get to recognize our own people in the work that we've done um, and that positivity that it brings to us as a community. So I hope that wasn't uh, intended as necessarily a negative comment, but if there are more people who are interested in competing for the awards, right? It'll add to the rigor of the process. Ooh, I will add a final thought. We bundle it together with the welcome to the profession. And there is nothing more exciting than becoming fully registered. That is really a considerable career milestone for our profession. It's pretty rigorous to become a psychologist. So yeah, that's probably about half of the cost, but what a beautiful way to get newly psychologists and exemplars in our profession together and all celebrated at the same time and the same place. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, there is another question just asking to say more about the winners that are selected. And I apologize for the mix up. We do have our 2023 award winner video. It was just tagged on the very end of our presentation. So if people are interested uh, after we wrap up the Q&A, I would be happy to play that video for everyone. Uh, are there any other questions that anyone else has that they'd like to enter into the chat or into our Q&A on our meeting? Okay, it looks like for the time being, oh, sorry, Judy, go ahead. I just said we just in giving people a, a few quick minutes to type if they're going to, there's nothing wrong with getting back 20 minutes of your lunch hour at this uh, awards video, please do stay and watch it. I think it's under a minute and a half. So it's really short and just a beautiful way to get to know who this year's winners are and celebrate the work they've done. No, just thank you very much for attending and for your input and spending your noon hour with us today. Thank you for joining us. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you very much to our CEO, our president, our president-elect, our treasurer, and to Ada and PEA staff for arranging our meeting. Uh, if anyone is interested, we would love to see you at the gala at the end of the month, and you can stick around and check out our award-winning video.